Indy Mogul. Welcome to the all new Movie Math. Here are today's headlines. Out in the Chipmunks 3D and the 3D trend, the Smurfs hit theaters in 2011, De Niro to play Lombardi thanks to Hollywood packaging, and of course the weekend box office. Click on the story you want to watch or sit back and enjoy them all. Now let's get started. 20th Century Fox announced this week that Alvin and the Chipmunks 3 will hit theaters December 16th, 2011, which is business as usual for the franchise since both of the first movies were also holiday treats. But this one will be in 3D. So if you thought the first two movies made a lot of money, you haven't seen anything yet. This is a brilliant idea because who could resist singing Chipmunks in their face? I certainly can't, and this is bad news for Steven Spielberg and Peter Jackson's motion capture adventure Tintin, which hits theaters the very next week which will also be in 3D, by the way. In fact, there are at least a dozen 3D movies hitting theaters this year. Now, according to DreamWorks Animation head honcho Jeffrey Katzenberg, it costs about $15 million to make a movie 3D. If we take a look at the Ice Age franchise, the first two movies were in regular D, while the third was in 3D. Interestingly, its domestic gross was about the same, yet its international gross increased significantly. Meanwhile, the Final Destination's 3D trip led to its biggest box office haul ever, although as you can see, not every 3D movie is an Avatar or Alice in Wonderland box office juggernaut. So effectively, Hollywood is raising your movie ticket price by about $3 on a regular basis. Is it worth it? And if so, for which movies? Write your thoughts down below. Know what else hits theaters in 2011? The Smurfs in live action! While it hasn't been confirmed if the Smurfs themselves are in live action, their medieval surroundings will be. Neil Patrick Harris will play Johan, the human who interacts with the Smurfs, while Jonathan Winters is Papa Smurf, Katy Perry is Smurfette, and Quentin Tarantino is Brainy Smurf. Man, I kind of hope we do get to see these guys as Smurfs. And I wonder who's going to play Gargamel. Write your casting ideas down below. So, our blue people box off his gold? Before you answer, don't forget that Scooby-Doo was a box office hit and spawned a sequel, but it also killed a few careers. I hope you know what you're doing, Tarantino. Variety announced this week that Robert De Niro will play legendary football coach Vince Lombardi in the upcoming biopic from ESPN Films. The movie will begin in 1959, following Lombardi as he transforms the Green Bay Packers from one of the worst teams in the NFL into five-time NFL champions. ESPN Films has had little success at the box office, but football movies are a pretty solid bet. And ESPN plans to release the film between the AFC and NFC Championships in the Super Bowl in 2012. Yep, that is the one time of year many would say it would be downright un-American not to see a movie about Vince Lombardi. This movie will be written by Eric Roth, who wrote The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Now, De Niro, Roth, and ESPN Films are all represented by CAA, one of the top talent agencies in Hollywood. And this is a common practice, packaging movies in-house at a talent agency. Whereas studios used to piece a movie together, now agencies do all the prep work and present studios with tidy little packages, including a hefty price tag and a cut of the film's gross for the agency. But since these top agencies have all the top talent, their expensive packages are hard for studios to resist. Does this result in the best movies? Who should have the creative power in Hollywood, the studios or the agencies? The studio system back in the day certainly had its drawbacks, but this is far from a perfect system as well. After the break, we'll take a look at this weekend's box office. Alice in Wonderland took the number one spot again, bringing in another $62 million for a two-week total of $208 million. That means Burton is well on his way to his most successful movie ever, having already surpassed Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and with Batman next to come. However, while many had speculated that Alice in Wonderland might surpass Avatar's box office gross due to a stronger debut, it turns out Burton's flick isn't holding up as well as Cameron's. Whereas Avatar fell just 1.8% in its second weekend, Alice fell 46%. Plus, it will have nowhere near the run on IMAX that Avatar did, as on March 26th, How to Train Your Dragon will take over. But Disney has their new champion, and word is Burton's next project will be Maleficent, a retelling of Sleeping Beauty from the villain's point of view. I'll bet you a gabillion dollars that Helena Bonham Carter stars. Second place at the box office went to Green Zone, opening with $14.5 million. That's stronger than Damon's usual openings, but nowhere near the Bourne movies. It is also on par with director-writer Paul Greengrass's United 93, which only went on to gross $31 million at the box office. Unfortunately, with a $100 million budget, Universal will not be in the Green Zone with this movie. And surprisingly, She's Out of My League took the third spot with $9.6 million, beating Remember Me, which came in at number four with $8.2 million. Jay Baruchel tops Robert Pattinson. I guess we now know who the real 10 is, don't we? 
And that's this week's movie math. I hope you're enjoying the new format, and I'll be back in two weeks with an all new episode. As always, thanks for watching. Subscribe, comment, rate.